Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the camp. Come on, live. Bye, Uh huh. This is Hi, Real playing. Fans Real Talk. talk. Real Fans Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk, we the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk, we the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam High in demand, so please stand by if you can What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez You heard what I said, we elite Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets it's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9 For the older folks, so even if you younger No matter what sport, this show, we got it covered It's filmed live, in the middle of BK So ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursday What's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk there's a whole lot of action going on this week. Plus, you know, my, my wifey for life, Serena Williams, made short work, you know, of her last opponent. Got yeah. a 100th, uh, you know, win at, uh, at the U.S. Open. Broke the record. But, that, you know, that's like, that's like, we, we got a whole bunch of stuff to get As into. As expected. We got I know. some guests on in, in the building tonight. We got some new music for y'all tonight, man. A couple, couple of the uh, family members sent us some stuff in. So, you know, we're going to have to play that a little later on in the show. But uh, before we do all of that, let me introduce my co-host, Emma Marie. What's, What's going up? On? What's going on? Speaking of Serena, I'm going to go to her Fashion Week show this week. So I told wifey you said hi because I know y'all haven't Emma's seen always, each other in a Emma, minute. Emma's always out here. <laughs> the man you, know, you, you, you ain't supposed to be with your significant other like, while you at your I get it because she's working. It's kind of like boxing. So they, you know, they Listen, to be, so. she's putting on a bomb show. And so we move, you know. It's going on, man? man, I'm excited. It's Thursday night. NFL quick off tonight. Yeah. Um, got some football news. We got a good guest. We're going to get in some basketball tonight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but M, um, it I'm is cool. it is I'm the kickoff. I'm yes. Just, I'm I'm glad that you are okay this week, Eric, because I know you had a rough two weeks. Uh, when Andrew Luck retired I've, and, and I've, the Mets I've, the other night. Listen, <laughs> Mets is really pissing me off. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> you can't be blowing those six-run leads in the ninth inning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm 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 disgusted with them still, even though we bounced back. Yeah. Uh, but Andrew Luck, I, I've, I've, we're over that. We moved on. Jacoby Brissett got a little bit of money. Right. And he's one of a, many guys yeah. getting a lot of money out here. Em. Yeah. So Ezekiel Elliott is another guy who got a big check this week, ninety million dollar contract over the course of six years. Now this makes him the highest paid running back in the NFL. Um, today during the press conference, um, owner Jerry Jones said some really kind, beyond kind words about him. Um, so he said he is a cornerstone player and he was more than happy to give Ezekiel Elliott the deal of a lifetime and one that is significant for the Cowboys. So did we expect for this to play out like this, guys? Uh, I mean, I did. I knew they, I knew they was going to eventually have to, to cut the check. I mean, it's Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, I mean, the Cowgirls are, <laughs> at, you know, barely a playoff team without Ezekiel Elliott on the field, you know, but with him on the field, they're a Super Bowl contender. Uh, Jerry Jones knew that. Uh, the, the, the GM knew that. They were always going to get it done, but it, it wouldn't be Jerry if he didn't take his little digs at uh, Ezekiel Elliott, the whole Zeke thing. But uh, mm-hmm. listen, he got he got his money. It's, it's, it's well-deserved. Running back is the shortest uh, career in football. You know, so he wanted to get his money now. He did that. He got the. He became the highest paid running back, passing uh, Todd Gurley. Yeah. So now it's just about going out, showing, and proving. Absolutely, I think we all were in agreement. We thought Zeke was uh, deserving of the extension. Yeah. Um, he got his money. We thought it would come to this. We didn't think it would take this long. We didn't right. think it would be days before the yeah. start of the season. Uh, but ultimately, both sides are happy with this. I think if you're Jerry Jones, you look at the situation. There's a team that they've drafted pretty well the last few years, and now they've got a pretty good defense with an all-pro running back, uh, with a all-pro wide receiver, mm-hmm. and a young quarterback. They have the pieces to compete in the NFC, and Jerry Jones wasn't frugal this summer. He's, yeah. he, he gave Jalen Smith his contract, and the left tackle got his contract, and Demarcus Lawrence got his contract. So it was only right that Zeke got his as well. Right. Where he might draw the line, though, is uh, that forty million a year. That Dak Prescott. I was, was going to say, listen. where does that put him now with putting out all that money and Dak wanting forty mil? 
Uh, I think Dak is is in a very tough spot. Um, yeah. Because I think Amari Cooper has to get paid. They gave up a first round pick for Amari Cooper, mm -hmm. so I highly yeah. doubt that they're just gonna let Amari Cooper walk. Yeah. Um, especially when you look at how the Raiders were able to turn that first round pick into Jonathan Abrams, mm -hmm. who's a, a very young and and highly touted safety. So Amari Cooper's gonna get his. Yeah. The question with Dak Prescott is, is if he doesn't have a superb season this year, if he has a let's say an average quarterback season. What's stopping them from moving on? Yeah. Because there's some other quote unquote average quarterbacks who are going to be available. Yeah. That'll be cheaper. Right. Well, I'm hopeful for him because even Zeke quoted today, he said that he hopes that Prescott gets what he wants because he would love to play with him for the remainder of his career. So, I mean, we see a Zeke in his corner that agrees with him. But of course, he got 90 mil. So, of course, he's like, yo, give him 40. Uh, of course. <laughs> you know, like. I don't know if there's enough cap room to right. go around for him to get 40. But yeah. after Amari's contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's no way they can pay Dak 40. They're not going to reset the quarterback market by making him the highest paid quarterback. Right. Um, he's definitely not deserving of that. He's not deserving mm -hmm. of it. And there are other quarterbacks who are waiting because we know we've heard the rumors since the end of last season what Patrick Mahomes may get right. when his time is up. So he, he and his agent are looking at this like if you dare give Dak 40. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah give me 100. His mm -hmm. head crack on the Chiefs. You better give me 100. <laughs> it's, it's a wrap. Yeah. I'm going crazy on the Chiefs. So they're yeah. not giving him 40. But like I said, in, in regards to Dak, if he does not light it up this season, mm -hmm. there will be real questions as to whether they should move on because there are going to be some other guys. Jameis Winston is probably going to be available. Yeah. Yeah. Marcus Mariota may be available. Uh, Kirk Cousins, I think, has the opportunity to get out of his Minnesota deal. Okay. So there's going to be some other guys where you can say, we don't need to give you 40. We can give 25 to 28 million to one of these other guys right. and keep it moving right along because Dak, I mean, because Zeke is really the, the key to their whole offense. Right. Now, speaking of contracts, Antonio Brown is one that is jeopardizing his $30 million. So currently he was fined for, you know, misconduct uh, from by not showing up to practice. So his general manager, you know, fined him and he took to Instagram and criticized the fine. So, I mean, this is getting crazy. <laughs> this is getting insane. What do you guys think? Um, I mean, yeah. So I, and it's crazy because I was riding with Antonio Brown, but then it's just like, bro, come on, after a while, yeah. it's like, all right, yeah, listen, you out of Pittsburgh, you got a new team, a new city, new state, whole new situation. Yeah. Like, bro, come on, we can't keep having these little little incidents. You got the whole helmet thing. All right, whatever. I, I, I understand. if You you know, you may be more comfortable wearing a certain type of helmet, mm -hmm. but, bro, get over it. Now you're going back and forth with the GM. Like, this is a dude that, that just saved you from where he was at. Right. And brought you over to Oakland. And now you're bugging out again. And then on top of that, now you it's, it's going to almost to blows? Yeah. He got to chill. He, yeah. He has to chill. I, I think it's ridiculous that we had this conversation about Antonio Brown. I recently reposted yeah. one of the conversations we had about Antonio Brown back in January. In the past, yeah. And we're still talking about these same type of antics and issues. Look, you wanted out of Pittsburgh. You wanted a new contract. You got both those things. Yeah. Now you're not showing up to walkthroughs and practices. They were in Winnipeg, and he just doesn't show up to the walkthrough before yeah. the game. Mm -hmm. No rhyme or reason for it. Yeah, and then, right, and then it's like anybody else who, let's say if you didn't show up to work and you wouldn't get paid that day, yeah. then you got the nerve to be mad that they're fining you for not showing up. Like, you're right. a guy who's supposed to be a leader for this team. You're a guy who's supposed to set the example for the young receivers on this team, right. and you're doing your own thing. The helmet thing, he, he released a picture, I believe, within the last 48 hours with the new brand that he signed with. So all of that was basically promo yeah he hyped it up just so he could sign a deal with mm -hmm. this new helmet manufacturer yeah and like so it, it was it was wwe almost you know what yeah. i'm saying I'm, I'm gonna drum it up and i'm gonna make it seem like we've got an issue like i might not play and i may retire and meanwhile the whole time you're already working out a deal behind yeah. the scenes you yeah. better have at least 1250 yards and, and nine touchdowns this season yeah you just can't be this arrogant and this um comfortable with not doing your job at the end of the day like this is your employer I doubt any of us can go up to our employer and disrespect them. Yeah, like, uh, I think the NFL nope. released that he said something like he's going to punch him in the face. I mean, that's not... He said, I'll hit you in the face, and then he punted the football away and said, now right. find me for that. Right. Yeah. Like, But, I mean, just... He's got a major issue with just craving attention because, again, we talked about it in the past. He sat there and went on Facebook Live during a team-only <laughs> session. In right. The locker room. Yeah. Like, something that every player knows should never be done. Yeah. And then for you to post a picture yesterday of the letter that the Raiders send you with right. the fine. Like, come on, bro. Like, and you... 
what are we doing out here? And I'm glad you brought that up because the last uh, team that you're with were, was mad about your use of social media. So now you take to social media to publicize a a letter. This just shows that he, you know, before if you were debating whether or not he was like the cancer, he was a problem. Right. This just confirms it that his behavior is unacceptable. Everything. He, he's, he's very erratic with everything. Yeah. I mean, he posted the letter. He puts the caption up even when your own team hates on you. Yeah. Like, yeah. how is someone who's giving you $30 million guaranteed hating on you? Yeah. They went out of their way to trade for you and bring you in. Yeah. He's definitely uh, jumping out the window. And, I, and actually, I want to go back to Zeke's contract a little bit because uh, there's actually a clause in Zeke's contract to where if he gets into any trouble outside of uh, football, really? yeah, yes. a, a lot of that uh, guaranteed money goes away. Wow. So... You know, even though we, we kind of feel like, all right, Zeke won that that uh, that whole situation between him and Jerry, but mm -hmm. Jerry may actually get the last laugh because I think that's good though. It's a good chance he could get it. I mean, it's the, at the rate he's going, it's a good chance he could get in trouble again. And yeah. now all that money that you wanted to be the highest paid, well, you got it, but then there's a chance you could lose it. I think he'd be held accountable. I think that was a smart move on Jerry to protect yeah. his money. Ab protect absolutely, his, we've his seen franchise. Zeke get into some issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I. I I don't really think, you know, everyone was quick to say Zeke won because he, he quote unquote, held out all summer to get his money. I don't really look at it as he won. I think both sides were happy where this ended. At yeah. the end of the day, yeah, Zeke gets the $50 million guaranteed. The totality of his contract isn't even the highest on his own team. Demarcus Lawrence got over $100 million yeah. on his contract. Mm -hmm. So when Amari Cooper gets his deal, he'll probably be making more annually than Zeke is. Yeah. So Zeke isn't going to be the highest paid player on your team. It's just that he's so important to that team. They wanted to take care of him and they gave him the guaranteed money so that he could, he could basically flaunt, Hey, I got the most guaranteed money. I got more than right. Todd Gurley did. Right. I think both sides won on that. Now, do you guys think that this will create an atmosphere of guys that may not be so deserving of this from holding out and that people are going to kind of do this more often because he did this? Absolutely. Yeah. But we've seen, we, we've seen both sides of the spectrum, though, because we saw last year where Le'Veon tried it and it right. didn't work. Yeah. Right? And even though Le'Veon got a nice contract, he didn't get everything he wanted out of it. Yeah. yeah. Right? And, and he still lost a year. Right. He lost <laughs> a year and he didn't get everything he wanted dollar-wise. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, Zeke was able to hold out all summer, yeah. didn't have to worry about putting wear and tear on his body from playing preseason, yeah. and got his money. Yeah. So somebody else will, will try it. I mean, we talked off air there are other guys who are going to top Zeke's number. Zeke's mm -hmm. number is the number for right now. Right. But when Christian McCaffrey's deal is up, mm -hmm. he'll top that. Right. When Alvin Kamara's deal is up, he'll top that. And there's a so running back, there's a running back who yeah. plays at MetLife. When his number's up, he'll top all those numbers. Yeah. So Zeke is the guy for now. Right. Until it's the next guy up. Absolutely. Now, speaking of the next guy that we wish were up, <laughs> Colin Kaepernick released a video today of him playing uh, a few days ago, rather, and Basically, um, you know, the video was a short clip of him uh, playing with uh, Odell, correct? And so in the video, it said 5 a.m., uh, five days a week for three years. It just reminded us that he has not played in the NFL for 889 days. So do we think that this is kind of like his, you know, a, a cry for help that he wants to return back? Or is this him just kind of reminding us that he still has it? Honestly, I kind of feel like it's a little, little clout chasing. Really? Yeah. Just because of the... the Timing? Like, yeah, like, I mean, come on, bro. Like, why not put it out when you first did Like, if you're legit trying to get back into the league, why not put that out? You're working with probably, arguably, the top three uh, wide receiver in football. So, we're talking about you're working with elite uh, receivers. Yeah. So, why not put that footage out as soon as you shoot it? Why, I mean, what's the way? You're trying to get back into the league. Right. You should have put that out before the preseason even started, you know, and then, you know, maybe... You know, with all of these uh, quarterbacks that, that have gotten hurt, you know, Andrew Luck retiring, mm -hmm. you know, a couple other quarterbacks went down, you might have actually got a call. I, not only do I agree with you, Tripp, I'm going to give you a couple more examples. So we saw when Antonio Brown was trying to force his way out of Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. right? He immediately put up footage of him working out with Kyler Murray to show he was healthy because mm -hmm. everyone was questioning the hamstring. Mm -hmm. He was working out with Kyler Murray. He was putting a lot of videos out on YouTube. I'm healthy, I'm running routes, I'm ready to go, right? Now, it's not the same situation. I'm not trying to compare the two. What I'm saying is when you want someone to know that you're ready to go and you're healthy and you want to play, you drop that footage. You don't wait till two days before the season starts to say, oh, by the way, look what I did all summer. Right. And listen, I have always said I appreciate what Colin Kaepernick did. Yeah. I appreciate the message. I, I believe in the message. But he wasn't the right messenger. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he truly wants to play football. 
and I know for a lot of people this is hard to swallow and, and hard to accept. If Colin Kaepernick wanted to play football and the NFL is blackballing you, why hasn't he gone to the CFL? Yeah. Why hasn't he gone to Canada to do what other quarterbacks yeah. who weren't getting a shot? Yeah. People Go love to say out. Colin Kaepernick has been blackballed. You know who was blackballed? Warren Moon was blackballed when he came out of college. Mm-hmm. And Warren Moon went to the CFL and lit it up for three years and forced the NFL to pay attention to him. Right. Yeah. And then came to the NFL and still had a Hall of Fame career. Yeah. Colin Kaepernick could easily go to the CFL for a year or two. Yeah. Show everyone, not only do I still have it. Or you go to the XFL. I, easy. <laughs> we, we don't want to go too extreme. But he could easily go to the CFL, show yeah. everyone, not only do I still have the love for the game, I still have the talent. Yeah. yeah. And now if you guys don't sign me, now it's clear that you're blackballing me yeah. because I'm, sh- I'm good enough and I'm showing you on the field I'm good right. enough. Yeah. Not in a one-minute Instagram clip from a couple months ago yeah. throwing yeah. 10 passes to Odell. So I don't think that this video, I think it's beyond football. I don't think that, yes, the timing was kind of close to the season starting, but I think if he, I think he's smart, and I think he would have released this if he was really pressed to play. He probably would have released it earlier in the summer. Um, I think it's kind of with him putting the numbers 889 days since I've played. It's since 2016. I think it's reminding us of this uncomfortable situation and the reality of it and how ugly it is that Mm -hmm. I was out of the league for, I am out of the league um, now for 889 days. So I think that, you know, obviously going back to his protest, it was to show an unbalance, um, an unjust society. And the unbalance um, really showed with the fact that he does not have a job because he was unjustly removed. You know what I mean? So I think that I don't think it's about him trying to get back into the NFL. I think it's a reminder of of just what happened because of this movement. Now, I can say I think Cap needs to speak up like as soon as possible, though, too, because we haven't really heard much from him. We haven't. Yeah. And there's a lot of people speaking for him, even with the NFL deal um, with Rock Nation. We didn't really hear his thoughts. We keep hearing Nessa, his girlfriend. Who, we keep hearing her. We keep who, hearing mm-hmm. Eric Reed. Everyone Kenny else. But Kaepernick, so to me, I feel like you also can't throw rocks and hide your hand. You do have to speak about this situation that you sparked. Yeah. Um, this is a global conversation that needs to continue. And I don't know. I just That's the only thing I'm really confused about. I don't know why he hasn't really been more vocal. And that's um, my issue. And if you want to be a social justice trailblazer, like just... That's fine, but let's hear yeah. something. Because, you, cause, you know, showing that is great. Yeah, the 889 days or whatever. Yeah. But... If you're really not trying to play again, then that kind of changes things. Because then it really is, because now it's kind of like you really are clout chasing now with everything you do. I would like to hear Colin Kaepernick come out, do a press conference, Mm -hmm. and say, yes, I am still trying to play in this league, but I have not gotten any offers, I'm, you know, tryouts, whatever the case may be. I want to hear him speak now. It's been long enough where he's been silent, and everyone else has been speaking around him, but now it's to the point where you're throwing out little things here. You got the Nike commercial, you got this, you got these videos, you got that video. But you have not actually said whether or not you want to play because you might not even want to play anymore. But cloud chasing, I don't think that's the right word. I want to call him cloud chasing. Maybe, maybe he doesn't just, need a cloud chase. He's a no. mega star right. outside so maybe, of it. I don't that think that cloud chasing. Well, is a mega star, but he cloud chases. I don't think cloud chasing is it, it though. It may be extreme, but I, yeah. I mean, I think we're all in agreement that because we haven't heard from him and we're hearing from other people, we don't know what, what's what to believe. Mm-hmm. Like as far as his intentions, I should say. Yeah. Yes, we know what he stands for, but does he want to play in the league? Right. Because you have a lot of people who are voicing their opinions on his behalf, and he may not want to play. Right. He may not want anything to do with the NFL anymore. He may be happy with his life the way it is right now. Right. But you. if you want to be in the league, you should be forcing the NFL's hand. You should be holding workouts and saying, every yes. team is invited, and I'm here working out. And then if teams don't show up, then it gives everyone the right to feel like, you know what? He is being blackballed. Right. Because he's trying to show you guys he's ready to play, and you guys won't even go and watch and him. And that he can play. Right. Right. But he's not even giving us that. So uh, for a lot of us, we're wondering, like, is he just happy being a martyr now? Right. Is he just happy being that symbol figure that we can say, hey, look what he did. And now the NFL banished him. But it may not be the, the whole narrative. But I think it's we can always already say that they banished him, though. You don't think that we can? No. You know what I mean? Like, the way if, they... If, if you're not trying to get back into the league, if you're not legitimately trying or wanting to play, then realistically, are you being blackballed if right. you don't want to? Right. And, yeah. and we the reason I say we can is because... So when he took the NFL to court, right, and said there was this whole collusion, in order for you to say there's collusion, that means all 32 teams would have had to say, no, we don't want him, right? Mm-hmm. Now... 
right off the bat, I could roll off a, bit, a bunch of teams that would have automatically said, we don't even need Colin Kaepernick, so it doesn't matter to us. Yeah. Like, are the Patriots dying to have Colin Kaepernick? No, we don't need him. Which goes yeah. to your point of him being the wrong messenger because of him. Right. Yeah. yeah. He, you know, he he took on this message and, and it was a great message. Yeah. But people forget that he was trying to force his way out of San Fran the year before. Mm -hmm. He walked away from $18 million. The 49ers didn't say get away from us. He renegotiated his contract so he could walk away and become a free agent. Right. Yeah. So I, I just don't see where the blackballing comes in. Like there were a lot of teams who had no interest in him anyway, right. whether he was taking a stand for social injustice or not. Yeah. If you want to play, I think you've got to push the narrative now. It definitely was. Um, it's difficult to make that judgment because of the fact that he wasn't, you know, a, a player that everyone was seeking after. So it kind of it hurts his case of. You know they're not allowing me or because if a lot of people didn't really want you then it's kind of hard to say right. that yeah. you know but um i don't know i think the clip was awesome i mean i'm i'm proud of what he's done for this movement and i just personally wish that he would speak up a little bit more so we can understand because everyone else is speaking for him and i want to yeah. hear his his thoughts on um the rock, Na rock nation and nfl deal for sure that's something that i'm like dying to hear what he has to say so yeah. Yeah, listen we all do Every, everyone yeah. is waiting to hear and again listen i I'm, i would love to see kaepernick back in the nfl and there's several teams right now that he could start for you know but yeah again if, if that's not what he wants and he since he hasn't said uh, you know such then i gotta look the other way i gotta think maybe right. he doesn't want to at this point yeah and i want to make this point too before we get off this topic like we forget one, how Colin Kaepernick was viewed before he started taking a stand. Mm. He was not well liked. When you go back and watch the clips of him kissing his bicep after touchdowns, he was already heavily scrutinized before he started taking a stand. That's a good point. Secondly, to say, oh, he's being blackballed, nobody wants him. The Seahawks had a meeting with him and wanted to bring him in as a backup quarterback. He didn't want to be a backup quarterback. The Baltimore Ravens had meetings with him to be a backup quarterback. He didn't want to be a backup quarterback. He feels he should still be a starter. And I respect that. He's a guy who started on a team and led them to a Super Bowl. But you can't say the league isn't giving you a shot when people are willing to bring you in as a backup. So who gets the job first, him or, or Melo? Oh, Jesus Christ. Ooh. Damn. Now, it's Melo being black. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm, if, if I had to take odds, I would say Melo because um, yeah. I think Melo's um, – Associations and friendships within the league of yeah. the Atlanta a job bit, first. Yeah. yeah, he got a little more power. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the the banana the banana boat. Uh, I mean, to say who has more left in the tank, that's probably a better question. Well, I don't know who has more. Left. Yeah, I don't Cap know. Uh, Melo, I love you, but I don't yeah, know how much is left in the tank. Say, say Cap, but you know, he at the same time he hasn't played in a couple of years now, so you know, that's his quarterback yeah. position is tough. Right. So. Yeah. But, I mean, I think even, I know we're going to get off cap in a moment, but <coughs> just to think that he went to court with his employer, like, the, it, to make it black and white, like, that's what happened. So I don't know who has a job that I take you to the court, I get money from this lawsuit. Settle out of and court. Then yeah. And then you play again after I want to get rehired. Like, regardless, even if you work a regular, like, corporate nine to five, you go to HR and you sue them, like, you're not yeah, coming back. Not. So, I mean, like, to put it black and white, like, that's essentially what happened. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Let, like, you'd have to have to be on the level of an Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, right. Patrick Mahomes. You'd have you, to be you, on that level to do something to this extreme yeah. and come back. Yeah. Like, you have to be that good. And Kaepernick wasn't that good when he when he first started. And his prime, process. he was never that good. Yeah. So. You know, he was, he was average. He was maybe above average, but... You know, he wasn't on, on that level of a top tier player in the NFL to where you could make that kind of a move. And then, all right, now, yeah, we're going to take you back. Yeah. Because, right. you know, it's a good chance we're going to get to the Super Bowl again and win yeah. one with you. Mm -hmm. So it, it, is, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, since we're still on football, y'all know we got family all across the, the country, north, south, east, west. And, uh, you know, we got definitely Memphis show us a lot of love. Uh, so we're gonna show some love back, and it's actually a friend, a uh, friend of the family, uh, Mace. This is actually an uh, artist that he's working with in Memphis, Tezo Da Vinci. He has a, a new song called uh, Randy Moss, uh, my favorite. Uh, I like this joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of I, 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 I like this joint. So you know, I told him, listen, man, you send it up, and we're gonna show love. We're gonna play, it. and then we come back, man. We, we got some, we got some more guests that we're yeah, gonna, we gonna bring out. We're gonna get in some basketball. Yeah, we we gonna get in some ball. We might have to save that mellow cap in the question for. When we bring our guests out. After, yeah, yeah, after yeah. We're going to get into some mellow talk. We're going to get into all types of basketball talk. All right. Well, Cliff, you let us know in the back, man, when y'all ready to rock and roll with the video. And then when we come back, man, it's going down.
Combos Court will be on set. Yeah, yeah, free size. Yeah. Finna ride under the seat, bigger now. Murder Ave gang, we known to get it in the stock. Shit get ugly if the trigger fine. And the cold word Tyson, I'm still letting pictures fly. Off the roof, had to get it off the stoop. Circle got smaller, spinning niggas for a loop. Yeah, I did it off for of clout, I did it off for of loop. First, I'll print you on a shirt, then I'll sit you in a suit. Yeah, so Brooklyn, shit, either you draw or they sketching you. Dead ass, so Brooklyn, rather be in confessional than correctional. Nah, this ain't for no MTV, NBC, this for the bros at MDC. They got sent on the hideaway, never got a holiday. Fort in St. James, worth the big, I had the wildest waves. Never frontin', nigga, what now? Brooklyn, USA, duck down. I'm reppin' Bucktown. Gun up on a run down. Low win a cut now. Might do a more. Niggas mad they shut lust down. I was down for the block. Guess what? I'm still Gucci down to the socks. If we miss, I gotta spin around on the block. Keep a stick around and never stick around for the cops. Nah, we don't carry no ID here. These pull me over trying to line me here. Diamonds blinded so they eye me here. Had a handle on court before carry. We don't do it for the hype. So we don't do it for the likes. 19. I can do it for that price. You do 18. And I read about a night. Facts from night students to life truant. Find me by the boat, they go getting right to it. Yeah, you found a nigga who just might lose it. The hood gentrified, so the white moving. Labels wanna sign me where? Pull up to the trap, you can find me there. G's, couple P's right beside me, yeah. My next cue, we need a piece saying I'll be square. I'm so Brooklyn. This is Deontay the Bronze Bum Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up? What up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus tripped young and intern Tom. But a white and black fans. Yeah. 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 I get all my facts from my bro Mark. The Right, welcome back. Uh, that was actually that was actually the, the big homie Cortez. That was his uh, So Brooklyn freestyle. I ain't right. mad at it though. Yeah, yeah. 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 That drum was hard. You gotta, you gotta switch the game up like that. We're gonna get to Tezo in, uh, in a minute. But, I love uh, that challenge. Yeah. I've seen a So Queens not, one. Yeah, listen. Well, you can't. It's, it was, about, it's, but it's so Whatever. I seen I'm a, just saying. That's, you can't come in and change the borough like I that. I've seen a So Queens one and I'm waiting for a So Long Island one. But, Nicki Minaj you know. retired, retired today. Yeah. yeah. That? So that's it. Ain't gonna be no more Queens one. Yo, go ahead. And you Suburban. You don't get that. You and Kodak. So Black. Long Island, that's what I said. Like, yeah, they so did. Long Island. Then why, why you don't make it then? Listen, I can't do everything. I'm biscuit not that can't represent for y'all? I can't do everything. Okay? Is Biscuit, he dropped the joint for y'all. Yeah. No, yes, he did. The So <laughs> Long Island. Serious? Yes. The So Long See, Island. You even Are you joking? Yeah. I'm dead serious. Oh, okay. We're going to get into that after the show. Exactly. After the show. You ain't even rapping for Strong Island but right now. Nah, nah, we got a special guest. Nikki did. We got a special guest. My man Combo's Court. <laughs> what's up? What's up? Drew, what's going on, man? man? How's everything? <laughs> Everything's good, Young man. Young legend, what's up? Welcome. What's up? How are you? Everything welcome. good? Welcome. Welcome. So welcome. we had to have you on, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I started following your podcast and listening, and you dropping jewels, but then you also got the workouts going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you got the combo you know. shade going yeah. on. You, you're doing a lot out here. We got socks. Here. We got everything, man. Yeah, yeah. Tell the people about yourself, man. Um, my name is Andrew Combo Salop. I played overseas for a bunch of years, 10 years, Denmark, Israel. And then I started a podcast towards the end of my career, actually after my career. And uh, there we have it. We're 93 episodes in. Um, wow. Yeah, we're moving. We're shaking, man. We're out here. We got a lot of good guests. God Sham, God Ray for Austin, Rick Buecher, Doug Gottlieb. We've had a bunch of good guests. Not the name drop, but I get some name dropping. <laughs> name name, name, name dropping. Drop. Drop. Actually, uh, <laughs> took some heat uh, a couple of days ago with the whole Andrew uh, Luck retirement thing. Yeah, he came on the fire for some comments. That Who, he Doug? Made. Yeah, yeah, Doug. Yeah, yeah. Doug, he, yeah. you know, he's on the skip bail list. <laughs> just say anything to get that reaction yeah. type thing. He's a smart guy. I don't even think he believes all the stuff he's talking about. <laughs> well, I, I know skip bail can't believe all that. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. know skip is outrageous. I don't think yeah. what, what, what Doug said was too wrong. I mean, he tweeted and he talked about it in the moment, and we talked about it here on the show. A lot of us didn't know why Andrew was stepping away from the game, and it, it was so sudden because yeah. he was on the sidelines that day, and then we get the news, oh, he's retiring. When yeah, he, but I'm pretty sure he knew. He knew, but the rest of the <laughs> yes. world didn't. So what, what Doug was talking about was what, what a lot of us mentioned in that, you know, it's 
it's a different time now in sports where guys are so sophisticated and they got other things going on and they're making money in so, so many other different areas. It's like, I don't need this. Yeah, everybody yeah. got their own brand. Social right. media changed everything, man. Changed the world, right. yeah. Changed everything. Yeah. You can do what you got to do when you got to do it. You know what I mean? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Talk about your time playing overseas. How was that? That was good. You know, I think I learned a lot about life even more than basketball overseas. You know, just seeing a different culture. I can't even imagine myself just living in New, New York my whole life. Um, yeah. You eat different foods. You got to adjust to different languages. Even though Israel and Denmark, they speak a lot of English, but it was a great experience, man. I think it brought it, it broadens your mind. You know, yeah. you, you just you look at everything differently. You look at everything, but it but it did let me know that New York is the best place in the world too. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I love New York. I wouldn't <laughs> want to live anywhere else. I think it's amazing when I see the way sports can change, you know, one's life to to be able to go out of the country. There's some kids I've never even left their borough in New York. Or their block. And their block, right. And their sport has allowed them to see another side of the world. Like, I think that's just phenomenal. Right. So when you're in the awesome. moment, you're not thinking, you're only thinking about the games. Yeah. But then when it's all over, like 10 years later, I'm like, wow, I just learned a lot about life. It's even more than the games. Like, yeah. the games don't really mean that much when you look back at it, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Now, because you played overseas and we've had this talk plenty of times, college guys should they go well high school guys should they go d1 should they go overseas talk about the difference in the game the top prospects here in the, in the level of competition here as opposed to playing grown men overseas who've been playing pro since they were 15. i mean it's a big difference athletically it might be even better here but just like the mental side of basketball is so different overseas they think the game differently yeah. and there's just a different appreciation for feel for basketball iq it's a lot different than here. A lot of a lot of basketball here is based on athleticism, yeah, you know. I agree. And uh, that's cool, but you know, when you get to them higher levels, you got to think the game. You got to think the game. You know what I mean? It's a huge difference overseas. It's a totally different basketball game. I mean, you see, Brandon Jennings went over there early. Mm -hmm. What he averaged like five, six. He probably should have got more playing time, but you know, this style of play probably just fit him better. You know what I mean? Like it's just they appreciate things on a different level than here. It's just a totally different basketball. It's, but I think with social media, everything's coming together and we're all playing alike. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like almost, it's very, like look at Luka Doncic. Like he got some stuff in his bag. He looks like, yeah. he got American stuff, like yeah. step backs, everything. You know what I mean? So Because you're watching, you know, exactly. now and you can go on five seconds on the internet and look up every great player. Right. So you kind The lines of, are blurred now. Yeah. The games are a lot more similar, but they appreciate they got great feel for basketball, great flow for basketball. Here's more athleticism, more one-on-one, -on -one, more, you know, we're in a highlight era. I guess the highlights are better over here, but, yeah, that's the differences, really, you know, for sure. It, it's, it's crazy to think, you know, to spend that much time over there. And uh, we definitely want to get into some NBA talk. Um, what are your thoughts on the, on the landscape of the, of the league right now? There are a lot of... What's what's the right word for it? It's um, moving, player movement, player a lot mobility. Of, a, lot of, a lot of player movement, uh, a lot of player empowerment. Guys forcing their way to different places. What's your thoughts on that? I like it, man. Like you know, the NBA, used to, the owners, and everybody else used to have so much power. Now the players got a little more power because they realize they're following, their impact, what they could do, and yeah. they move. And they, I'm always going to side with the players. You know, I understand it from the old school fan point of view. Like, you want to have a team that's, you know, you want to stick to one team and all that, but I think the kids like the players now more than the teams, you know? Right. Yeah, you know? I think Jordan kind of... And we can see that. everything all the time. I, I keep going back yeah. to social media. We can see everything all the time. So it's not yeah. regional anymore. We can't just see the Knicks on MSG every day. Like, we can see... If we have yeah. league pass, you can see every game. You see every highlight on social media all the time. So you, we kind of follow the players more than the teams in this day and age, yeah. you know? Right. Absolutely. I've seen that loyalty shift when LeBron made those movements because it was people who were, like, diehard Cleveland, you know, fans. And then when he started moving around, it was like, okay, I'm really... I'm really a LeBron fan. You know what yeah. I, mean? I mean? So I felt that yeah, he personally. Tripped. Kind of like a martyr almost. Yeah. Like yeah. he had to take the blunt of the blame for all that. Now he everybody's did. doing it. Yeah. Now it's cool. Mm -hmm. When he did it, he was like, but there was always those super teams. Like, you know? Yeah. But I think when LeBron did it, it was different because of where he was at in his career. So we had seen super teams be formed together through trades or guys towards the end of their prime signing up with somebody. But he was the best player at a very young age saying, I'm going to team up with these guys. Had him and D. Wade said, we're going to go to a specific city together, it probably would have been better received. But the fact that it was Miami, D. Wade already had the roots there. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, Bosch is there too, and now I'm joining up with them. I think a lot of people felt a certain type of way about that because he, he was and he still is the best player in the game. I think that TV special killed him. 
Oh, yeah. that played amazing. Yeah. I mean, oh, that that's killed probably him, more so what it was just, than anything. It was a decision. Yeah, he, <laughs> that was. It. He should just, just put it out on Twitter or something. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. <laughs> Lay low. Yeah. I mean, I mean if he, anything, he was let the world talk. You know, he doesn't yeah. even say anything. Yo, I'm going here. But yeah. I, I think it would it would have hurt either way because we saw the backlash when Kevin Durant went to Golden State. And yeah. Well, that was crazy though. That was yeah. a little crazier because well, he just yeah. lost to that team. Yeah. Right. That yeah. After being up three one and you. Right. That was on some I can't beat him. I'm gonna join him. Like that was bad. They were seventy three and ten and joined him. That was that was worse than what LeBron. I yeah, mean, because there's no, because because now it's like th there's no kind of competitive nature here because you were literally up three games to one on this team and you did not perform in the the last couple of quarters and those last couple of games in, in the series and then to say oh all right not I'm not gonna try to beat them I'm just gonna say all right let me just go run with these guys yeah. get a couple of rings and that's it I I mean I do think it was worse than LeBron but I also think that it was a atmosphere that was created by LeBron. So when you when you're continually like even now LeBron is on the on a move and he's trying to find the right guys to fit with him right and he's not just looking for role players he wants the best guys so if you're Kevin Durant you've also got to do kind of the same thing I'm not saying I agree with him going to Golden State but you are looking to join up with guys if LeBron doesn't go that route maybe Kevin Durant never takes that same path and say I'm gonna go with Golden State I'll try to win it here mm -hmm. but watching LeBron go to Miami for four years and then come back to Cleveland. And immediately, as soon as he joins Cleveland, what do they do? They go get Kevin Love. They go get other vets to surround him with. So it's not like LeBron has ever just built up a team. He's looking for that same type of help. So I don't think we can criticize Kevin Durant as harshly as some people want to and make it seem like, oh, that was a sucker move. Kevin Durant's still one of the best players in the world. Oh, definitely. And he was, he I mean, was still him, the best player on that Warriors team. Him healthy is the second best player in the world, easily. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they played a specific style of basketball that he liked. I mean, I think no one's criticizing him for that. I think it's just the timing is a little awkward from what happened the year. Yeah, he's before. great. Nobody's saying. You know what he's, I mean? Yeah. Like, I think just nobody's saying he's not great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who love to throw that narrative out. Yeah, but Kevin Durant's not a great basketball player. There are a lot of who people who that feel that there are a lot of people who feel that the, the championships are diminished because it's Golden State, even though he was back-to-back -back Finals MVP and the best player on the court. Well, the yeah. championships are somewhat diminished. Yeah. Because, but mean, he's still he's still the second best player in the world. They they just, how are we diminishing him then if he's still the second best player in the world? Because they might have won them anyway. They didn't yeah. win the year before he got there. They won. They won one. They won two years they before. The year before they didn't. Before. Yeah. They needed him to be great. They were yeah. good. They needed him to be special. I'm not arguing yeah. that he's the, he was the best basketball player on that team. But, but that doesn't necessarily mean so they his, needed him to win. Decision, the way I, obviously, he guaranteed it almost. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it would have been like the equivalent of if LeBron would have been like, "All right, the Celtics bumped us. Now I'm gonna go play with KG and Paul Pierce right. and these guys." Right. You know, he still at the end of the day, Miami was coming off of not making the playoffs, and they still had to, had to get together. Like you know, Golden State was already established; they were already the best team in basketball. Right. And then, and they just they just reached that. So that's more of where the, the the hate and the shade came from because of the fact that you just joined a team that beat you. But had yeah. had he joined the Spurs, he probably would have had a similar outcome to what he had in Golden State, and I don't think anybody would have really had a problem with it, but just the fact that he's just coming off of losing to these guys. And right? I, and and I get that. that. So that yeah. To me, I give him the respect because he performed, right? We saw LeBron go to Miami that year, and even though for most of that season it was pretty easy for them because they were the best team, LeBron didn't perform in the finals. Kevin Durant went the opposite. Kevin Durant basically said, jump on my back, I'll carry us. Steph yeah. didn't shoot well in that finals. Yeah. Draymond wasn't really that good in that finals. KD took over. KD mm -hmm. said, I'm, I'm, I'm the man now. I'll take over. I'll make sure I carry us across the finish line. We've seen other guys go to these big moments and fold. Kevin Durant didn't. Mm -hmm. So Kevin to me, Durant that's why I respect great. Right, yeah, but, but that, that's well, why I respect I mean, if he would have stayed healthy, they probably would have won. They would have won three feet. They would have three feet But they, were also, no. they also had There's 73 no, wins before that, so it's kind of like... There's no doubt just, he's a great player. It, they, second best in the world. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. To me, I just feel like it's, it's overblown the narrative of, oh, he went to Golden State. They were good, yes. He made them special. Okay, all championships aren't created equal. Right. If he would have won one in OKC, everybody should have and would have looked at it differently. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just like right. LeBron's Cleveland championship outweighs the Miami two. Of course. Yeah. I, I agree that's with that. Yo, yeah. If Kevin Durant yo, comes back and wins the ring for the Nets. LeBron's performance when KD and Kyrie got hurt, he should have won MVP of that series, even yeah. though he lost. Yeah. That performance was ridiculous and on an the individual first time level. They played them. The yeah. first time they I don't played know what JR was doing yeah. that day, yeah. but you know, oh, <laughs> they they probably would have lost anyway. But yeah. that performance was ridiculous. Was Sometimes we don't remember that because he didn't win the, the championship. Right. Yeah. You but know you know, what I mean? at the end of the day, when we rank players at the end of their career or even at the end of the season, the rings is what we, is what we count. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like regardless of how the moves are made. When you look in the history of them, you're going to count those rings. So they, as part of it, as part of the puzzle. If he finishes with five rings, are you going to put him ahead of Kobe? Who? 
Kevin Durant. Like, like Robert Ory got 48 rings, but we don't put him in that conversation. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if KD were to finish with five, you're saying? Yeah, if, if he finished with five rings, do we elevate his career past Kobe's, who also finished with five I rings? Would. Oh, I KD? Would. Yeah, if Kevin I Durant, like me personally. I like KD's game better than Kobe's game. Me personally. But if you, but if you're someone who says, "All right, yeah, I know he got these, uh, these two, in, uh, in in Golden State," and, and so are we going to take away from those? Because Kobe's five, he he didn't join yeah, the uh, seventy three win team. But to play devil's advocate, Kobe's early rings were with a dominant Shaq. Shaq, Shaq had a finals where he averaged over thirty points, double digit, uh, double digit rebounds, rebounds, and three blocks. I'm not the biggest Kobe guy, but he did win a few without Shaq. No, he did, yes. Yeah, yeah. But just to play devil's advocate, if I want to say, oh, because KD won those two with Golden State. So those first two that Shaq was the MVP of the finals but they came and to, was they, they demolishing came, they everyone. Came, they came no, together, right? yeah. and the Lakers weren't already a powerhouse right. when they got together. And that, but that was a young Kobe that wouldn't have won those two without Shaq. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that I mean, third would, one, would, yes, Kobe was ready to win a, a title as the guy. Would, would but Shaq those first have ready? If you're just looking at, at, at the eye test, right? Who's a better basketball player, Kevin KD Durant. or Kobe? Kevin Durant. I agree, man. And I love Kobe. the killer instinct Kevin is Durant. different. That's what Kobe right, had over everybody right. besides yeah. Jordan. But mm -hmm. but if you look at KD, man, uh, on the eye test, he's probably like top three ever. Just like right. watching him play basketball, don't care about the stats or nothing. Seven feet, handle, right. shoot. You know Every, I mean? Everything it's, that he can do. Yeah. How did you feel about those comments that Kobe made recently about Shaq, about him not being? <laughs> I took it as a compliment. Too lazy, and that if he would have, yeah, he I did too. He yeah. Kobe, Kobe said, "Yo, if this guy would have worked like Harder. he should have worked, he would have been the greatest player ever." Like Shaq obviously didn't work like he was supposed to work, right. which is fine. He's still yeah. a top whatever seven five player yeah, ever. He still finished with four and that's rings, scary right? that he didn't even give it a hundred. But the thing is though, what Kobe doesn't understand is that not everybody could work like him. I actually had to do it on my podcast, PJ Performance. He's big in the athletic training world. Like mm -hmm. genetic, also people think of genetics is just like jumping high and running fast, but it's also how hard you could work for the amount of time. Like if Shaq would have worked like Kobe, his knees would have probably been done. Right. He, yeah, probably wouldn't have, he probably would have been yeah. right. even top 50 yeah. anymore. Right. He couldn't even he, play. He yeah. might have been Joel Embiid. Yeah, he would have been a guy who was always hurt. Some people can't talented. work like that, right. you know? Yeah. You can't work like Kobe. Like if I work like Kobe, I probably wouldn't be able to play at all right now. Like, yeah. I mean, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, but, but Shaq admitted that himself because Shaq has always said, mm -hmm. I would work myself into shape as the season went on. Yeah. So I would come in about 15 pounds overweight yeah, and <laughs> come February, I'm in shape now for the playoff run yeah. and now I'm dominating guys. But it worked for him. Different right. folks, different that. strokes. Yeah. yeah, he knew that. Because he was still averaging 27, 28 a game and, and, and 10 yeah. rebounds and two blocks. So yeah, it, it well, kind of yeah. really didn't matter. He could have done point. little things. He, he, he didn't have to work like Kobe, but he could have done a little bit more in the offseason, stay in shape. Yeah, he worked you know, with free just, throws, maybe that He could have was... done like little professional right. stuff if he wanted to, not laid off the fast food just a little bit. <laughs> and it might have made a might have extended his career and his Absolutely. injuries wouldn't have came as early, you know what I mean? It would have helped him. Yeah. Would he work like Kobe? No, he'd kill himself. You know right. what I mean? Kobe just loved the game. I mean yeah. we, we talked about it. Right. When, when we talked last week about Andrew Luck and there's certain guys who like Tom Brady loves the game. Yeah. They're guys who Obviously. just want to right. Who playing. just want to play. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other guys who like, yeah, I enjoy the game, but I'm not killing myself. I'm just really. talented. Right. You know? Yeah. Kobe was killing himself up until his last day. Yeah, with the yeah. talent level that right. he had. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean that's that's why he's ahead of most people who mm -hmm. that, that were in his uh, his era of basketball because of that though. For sure. It's a combination of his talent and, and, and his work ethic. All these guys are great, man. It's like yeah. hard to like, you know, split. We're splitting hairs. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so and that's so, that's why I think the list is unfair. But go ahead, Trip. So can we so can we go back to to, to Mello now? <laughs> and I want to get your take on this. Uh, where do you think one is is the best fit for Mello, if any, or is he even going to get a job? <laughs> what, what do you think? <laughs> I'm just like I love Melo Hall of Famer. It's over, man. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, Thank you. you know that he, he's gonna Thank get on the you. roster. This it's year? just that you know, like Joe, <laughs> like you. Joe Johnson, same thing. Like, but well, Joe Johnson's these, about to come back. They no, no, a of we'll ones. see. But these guys play a style of play that isn't conducive to the current NBA. Yeah. And Thank if you, you don't play that style of play, that you got to be super elite. Yeah. Like, if you're not like a three and D guy that could catch and shoot threes, like, he's not amazing catch and shoot and he's not a switchable defender so and he wants to be a go-to guy i mean it's tough for Melo, and i love Melo, man yeah, Melo's the man so Melo's a hall of famer no team he's one of the greatest scores on right now well i guess brooklyn for the reason that this year doesn't really count too much nobody expects anything else. he could be like yeah. a placeholder like he could Durant. we could just have a farewell tour from him if you they're want gonna, they're gonna need a small forward i mean you, you know what you know what's like listening to myself know, talk here you know, what, <laughs> you know what mellow could have done you got two i'm, I'm sorry to be that guy but <laughs> mellow should have saw what's coming 
earlier. Like, okay. he likes to be in the gym doing a lot of skill development stuff. He needed to get on the track and run straight lines as fast as he can, get on the hill, run, work on his body. He's, like, doing skill development all day. Like, yeah. nobody wants to see 48 jab steps at the elbow anymore. It's over for yeah, that. I Thank think a you. lot of veterans kind of kind of uh, struggle in that regard of not making those adjustments to yeah. the style of play that there is. You know, yeah. like, Trevor Ariza fits perfectly for the current NBA. Right. Yeah. You know 3 and B right. can catch and shoot. That's He's nowhere near the level of player right. Carmelo. Yeah. But he might help a team more than Joe Johnson right now, more than Carmelo, yeah. like yeah. a championship team. He yeah. might help them more. You know, yeah. we're, we're, we're all nostalgic about Melo because Melo is truly... A heart of... No, he he's the last of, of a dying breed. Yeah. They're those type of players, right? That 90s, early 2000 ball, hero ball, like I said, jacking up a lot of shot, a lot of iso ball, is gone. And Melo's like our last connection to that. Yeah. So that's why yeah. so many people I think are so like, no, Melo's got to be on the team. I need to see him a little bit more. Yeah. Those days are done. And, he, and I love Melo. Yeah. I love Melo, but he as Andrew just else, said. Though. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah, Melo doesn't do any, anything as, else. As Andrew just said, like, if you take him on, right, so people who say, oh, he, he can be on the roster. Yes, he can be on the roster, but is he going to be comfortable playing 20 minutes a night and only getting four or five shots? He's not. Even if he plays 40 minutes with Brooklyn and averages 20, 23, like, what does it do? Like, I don't know. Nothing. I guess he'll yeah. put fans in the seats for the people that want to see him play. I mean, yeah. I, that's I important. So that would probably be the worst thing they could do. Because yeah. if they're truly trying to build up this culture that they talk about, the last thing you want is Kyrie and Melo playing iso ball all season, and then next year, now you try to figure out a way to in implement Kevin Durant into that? It's so the... The, the iso ball that Kyrie plays is so different because he's kind of operating from the top, and there's right. still spacing. Yeah. Like... I forgot yeah, to, I had this dude on my podcast, shooter. I kind of said how Jamal Crawford is kind of an ISO player, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit different when you're operating from the right. top and they're spacing. Right. Like, yeah. you just got Melo at the elbow doing That's it. 40 That's jab it. steps. Taking like, up half the court. Come on. You gotta, yeah, you got to been in Chris down. Brickley's gym all day playing one-on-ones. <laughs> like, so, I, I don't want to be the me like the guy not to, like, to be... Trust me, you're no, not. I'm, I'm, Mello, that, I'm like, that guy already. Mello. I'm that guy already, so don't worry about it. I'm that guy already. man. He's a Hall of Famer. And he's a fan favorite. Like, the people love Melo, but I mean... Sometimes when it's when it's when it's over, it's, it's over. over, man. I do think that he'll wind up on a roster this season. No, I think either L.A. or Brooklyn. Yeah, but I, I just really would he, like to know. Oh, go ahead, and I'll he's gonna have to kind of like swallow the pill that he's not gonna be a go-to guy though too. And yeah. my uncle's probably gonna hate me for saying this, but my uncle Kurt Thomas, who played in the league for mm -hmm. a lot of years, he I had this conversation with him towards the end of his career, and I think he was at a state the last few years where he kind of accepted like. He was chilling, <laughs> like, for real. Like, not that he was chilling, but he realized the difference of the style of play and being a veteran. I mean, he was the oldest in the league when he retired. He but was a locker room guy at that point. Yeah, right. at that point, he was yeah. really, like, you know, he's switching. He went to Bulls, he went to the Knicks, and, you know, I think he kind of, he swallowed that pill, and I think that Melo is reaching that, like, veteran that's kind of old school and not really with the new situation, and it's a hard pill to swallow when you're, like, well, he's, nah. he's time he's flies. Like I still think of O'Kill Mello. Like it flies, yeah, but you so. know what I mean. He he's not a freshman anymore. In the Stephen uh. interview, that that he could actually take a back seat and, and kind of be a team player. Yeah. But we won't know that until he's actually on the NBA roster. Right. If he does come to the to the Nets, so I will say this: that will probably add on even more for the 2K tournament this year when we get back up to the Barclays Center. <laughs> so I think for for us, for our purposes, that probably would be better. I don't know if I necessarily want him on the Nets, but again, for the 2K tournament, you know, to have him out, you know, out in the belt, then, you know. If he wants to play in the NBA, catch and shoot mellow, try your best on defense, and then the buckets will happen. That's my That would be my advice to him right. if I had him in my, if I was right. in his ear. It might be a little late in Melo's career. For, yeah, he should have sold that curve like earlier, defense. you know. Right. At this point, it's like, every, like everybody who is like did really well on Instagram did it before Instagram was cool. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like the same kind of thing. You got to see that wave coming right. before it comes. Right. right. You know? And he's older guarding younger guys now, so I don't know if that yeah, defense is going to be That's why I don't, guys know, are now. I don't know if he, he, I don't think he was really honest with himself during the interview with Stephen A. Smith. Right. Like he, yeah. he's saying all these things about. Well, he was honest in his head. I think he was a very honest interview. I mean, I guess he's maybe in not his self aware head. is what you're saying. Right. Maybe yeah. Yeah, self aware <laughs> is probably a better way. Like, yeah. you know, you got to understand, like, are you going to be happy going to a, let's say if you are on a contender and you're only getting 15 minutes a night, are you cool with that? Are you okay with being uh, maybe the third guy off the bench? 
who gets some minutes here or there. And, yeah, you get a couple shots every now and then, but the offense isn't running through you. A 3 and D guy. Yeah. A guy who's going to have to play a lot of defense and rebound. I, think I don't think he wants the, to ever on, do that. On, on, I don't on the think roster. He's, he's dealt with that reality. But I think, on any, I think on any roster. I mean, unless he's going to go play. No, no. Well, because if he's playing for a contender, then, yeah, because if you go, because I know they were saying speculation that Philly had some interest mm -hmm. or a, a team like the, the Lakers, I think, yeah, because they're already championship contending teams. So I think it would be a little easier. But on a, on a team middle of the pack to, to the bottom of the barrel, then I think it would be more difficult because it's like really, yeah, really losing. I might you, as well put up. Yeah, but that's the point. If, if yeah. I'm a middle of the pack team, let's say if I'm the Pacers, for example, who, you don't need who's Mello. a solid. Right. If I'm a solid playoff contender. I don't need to pull up. With, I don't need to put up with Melo's, you know, stuff now. At this point, when I'm trying to develop yeah. my other younger guys, you don't think LeBron could pull the strings to get Melo on the Lakers? Look, so well, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it to me. I know you were talking about Roy Jones always taking it to himself. I'm gonna take it to myself <laughs> right. right now. Yeah. I'm playing three on three, right? I'm about to play in some regionals, like to, <laughs> like some. I don't take my best friends to three on three. No, I take you, the guys. Take I take guys that I'm friendly with. But I take the guys who I think are going to fit the best. Yeah. Well, like, I don't take my three best friends to play in these these tournaments. <laughs> yeah, because you want to win. You know? Win. <laughs> I'm but trying to win. to Kendrick Perkins, uh, LeBron did try to get Cleveland to sign Melo, and yeah. that didn't happen. Did he? Did he? But, but that, he that, can make I, it happen if he wants to. No, but that, that wasn't entirely Maybe. true because they but weren't, they weren't in a position to sign Melo. They were never in a position to sign Melo. They were in a position when Kyrie had demanded the trade and New York was on a list. Mm -hmm. There was that rumor floating around that would you swap Kyrie for Melo? Right. And and what? at that time, yeah, at that time, David Griffin, who was still part of no, David actually had just left there. There was a new GM at the time. They were saying no because it wouldn't fit. Why would I trade my younger point guard for yeah. another wing player? It Play just wouldn't fit. Pretty much as LeBron. Right. And remember, the Knicks had no assets that they could give up. In the Boston deal, yeah, they get Isaiah, they got Crowder, but they also got that Brooklyn pick at the time. Mm -hmm. So it made yeah. more sense. Right. But Melo wasn't just sitting as a free agent and then LeBron saying, hey, go sign him. And Cleveland saying, no, he was on a team. It would have been a trade. Right. Yeah. Kendrick Percy, he'd be fronting, man. He, be, he don't be telling the whole story sometimes. <laughs> he's pretty good, though, on TV. No, I like him. Yeah, yeah. But he, he's a KD guy, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a big time KD guy. Everybody's biased well, in some yeah. way. Everybody has yeah. friends, you know? <laughs> right. So, I don't know, man. It is what it is, man. Uh, listen, I wish the best for for Melo. Yeah, me too, you know, man. I hope, I hope he does get another. Like, I don't want his career to end like with the last game. In so you want the D-Way farewell tour? That's what you want. It's not even that I want a farewell tour. I just want him to be on the roster. I don't even care if he doesn't play. Just the fact Wh that he can be. Why? Why does it help him? Why does it help everybody it's else? Well. It's because I just because it's Melo, man. I, just, I feel yeah. bad, you know. It's because he's it's, the last of the Gunners. That's why. Know. See, listen. so so if he's sitting on Orlando's bench. Nah, the 82 I mean, I games. I mean, you know what? No, I do want to see Melo get a ring. I, I would like to see Melo. Maybe the Spurs like do what Lamarcus Aldridge does, like because that's kind of like old school basketball. Lamarcus Aldridge yeah. is kind of old school right. type, mm -hmm. playing that mid range. But get Lamarcus out of there, put Carmelo in. Pop, <laughs> Papa yeah, loses Melo, mind. Melo ain't gonna win no win no ring with the Spurs either. I, like yeah. I mean, realistically, if he's if he is going to like try to to get a ring, I think it would have to be L. A. or maybe the Sixers. He could probably because they don't really have a. a bench what would be now. his role on a championship team? To come off the bench and score ten points a night. I don't think he wants to do that. And that's it. But that's the reality that he well, has right, to right, deal to me, with. Like, there's guys yeah. who are getting up and down the court quicker. Right. Yeah. That could. But that, in a that play, don't in shoot it more efficiently but from in play, three. In the playoffs where the game slows down, and you know him being a veteran, he could be more effective in the playoffs uh, situations. Regular season, yes, you know it's a little bit different, but I do think he could help a team out in the playoffs. What team? I think he could help the Lakers in the playoffs. Uh, he wouldn't you know? be on the court in the final seven minutes of that game. But he'd be in the game. I mean, he, he could con he could contribute. <laughs> he could contribute earlier in the game. That's right. Saying. But yeah. even still, it, it when you still have when you have Clay, D'Angelo Russell, and Steph on the court, who's Carmelo guarding? Right. Well, then I mean, he, he could play the four. So where would Anthony Davis play? Because Anthony Davis doesn't want to play the five. Well, he's I gonna mean, have to though. In Spurs, he might have to. Yeah. Listen, well, I mean, I, well, I mean, actually, he doesn't have to anymore because like, I don't even know. Like I, said, is, is I don't now. even know why we try to come up with scenarios for Melo. Melo had the scenario <laughs> when he went to to Oklahoma City. That was his opportunity to be a three and D guy behind George and Westbrook. Yeah. yeah. All he had to do was run the floor, yes, get open, and he didn't want that. And why Joe, somebody should have been taking a million catching three shots when he yeah. when <laughs> they were better when court. when Billy Donovan was taking them off the court. Yeah. I, I don't see a spot for him unless he's going to go play with a team like Orlando and just say, all right, this is it. I just want to get these this last season in. No, just I can't to see him doing that system. because if, 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 if Melo signs, he's going to at least want to play for a contender. I don't see him going to well, Orlando. Well, Brooklyn's not a contender this year. Or, he wants to play for them. Yeah. He, well, they're, they're a playoff team, though. 
they're still a playoff yeah. team. They'll, in the they'll, East, they'll, yeah. They'll get back to the, to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah they're a low-end playoff and, team. I mean, listen, if if, if, if the Nets could do to Giannis with, that, with, the, <laughs> with the guy didn't feed with to him the other night, they might even have a chance. That uh, 6'4", 40-year-old dude oh, that shut Giannis down the other night in FIBA. That's a totally different basketball. <laughs> I cannot. Oh, my God. That's that overseas basketball, yeah. man. He wasn't ready for that. He wasn't ready to go back. He's got two. I'm not as high on Giannis as everybody else either. Really? Yeah. We'll get into that all fair because that's yeah. going to be a long conversation yeah. too. We we, we got to get into that one too. Wait, hold on. I got to know where do you have Giannis ranked though? I mean, there's a lot of players better than him in the league. A, a lot of players yeah. better than him? Well, I heard you recently say. It's <sighs> rough. On a recent episode of your podcast, yeah, you listen to Combo Score by the way. Apple right, podcast. right. You got it's, 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 it's dope. It's dope. Um, the episode with Rick Buca was great, um, and and you and Rick were making the comparisons between him and Ben. So I'm assuming right. you you like Ben a little bit more. I like Ben's potential better. The way he could read the game, I think he'll be able to unlock a playoff series, unlock a playoff series at a higher level than Giannis can. I don't think Giannis has natural feel for basketball when it comes to vision and court sense. IQ. And then also, neither of them could obviously, could, both of them could only score in one zone. Like, we like players that could score in three zones. Yeah. To, um, obviously, the three. Mm -hmm. Mid-range is not as essential Whoa. anymore, but right. you still need it to keep them honest. Right. Yeah. And down low, they're both really only scoring down low at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, Ben got just better but vision, Giannis man. Like, shoot, though. And a more fluid player. Ben's way more fluid. Giannis is a better basketball player right now, I give you that. But potential-wise, I like Ben better. I think Giannis is very raw. And I do agree with you. I think Ben has a better feel for the game. But... Um, my thing with Ben is, is his refusal to shoot. And at some point, he's got to at least keep defenses honest. Right. And I think we've seen it the last couple of playoffs where when he isn't able to dominate the ball, he drifts on offense. And that's what makes it really tough to play him in some of those series. Like when they lost to the Boston two years ago and they were just sagging off him, they couldn't play him. They had to play T.J. McConnell. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he was refusing to do anything other than just get into the paint. Yeah. Um, he's got to at least do that. At least if he can keep defenses honest with a mid-range, with some sort of motion off the ball, then, yeah, I could see him being better because he, he is a better ball handler and he has a better feel for the game because he, he, came up as, he came up as a point guard. A more fluid athlete. Maybe yeah. not a better athlete, but more fluid. Right. right. You know? I mean, everything we're seeing from the summer, hopefully it translates because he, he's showing in a lot of these videos, he's taking a lot of shots. I think it's hard to win as a, as a, as a championship team when your best player is just going downhill every play. Like, that's not going to work when teams start thinking right. in the playoffs. So who, who, ben can really pick apart a game, you know what I mean? You You're right. Who gets the championship first, though? You what? Know, ben on Giannis, who gets the championship first? It depends on who's around them. But I think if you put Ben on, in Giannis' situation, man, he's going to make those guys look good. They have Al Horford this year and Joel Embiid that... Ben basically turns into a four when it goes into the half court. He just yeah. he goes in the short corner and just plays down low. So that's going to be a weird mix. But uh, depends I, on the fit around him. Yeah, I think the, the Horford mix is actually going to work because Horford is such a good passer, right? Yeah. So you can now and post up. Right, he and pass he and shoot. Right. And now you can you can post up Ben and, and create different matches because they have a lot of length on that team now. Well, yeah, Al Horford's great. He's a switchable defender, too. Right. He fits the NBA. Before sure. we wrap up, Andrew, tell us where you, we can find you on social media and your podcast. You could find me on Instagram at one two combo. It's O N E T W O C O M B O. Listen to Combo Score podcast, man. Apple Podcast, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. You should work with them on your handles too if you're gonna get ready for Portland for Peace. Oh my Next gosh. year, cause let me hear it. Let me hear it. Spell it out real quick. M's in the game next. Year. M's in the game next year. Football, yeah. or basketball, oh, basketball. Basketball. Oh, basketball. You play ball. <laughs> Where at? Um, I ended up running track in college, oh, okay. but not ball. But I went cool. to Towson University. So you and Melo could have been on the track, running straight ahead. I, yeah. <laughs> and you guys could have gone. You guys could have gone in the gym and shot a lot of spot up jumpers. He would have been three and three. He would have been. Right. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Call us out, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys again for tuning in for another live episode. And Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. Anytime, man. And catch this is great. You guys time. are very talented. I love the show. I was I don't know much about football, but I really enjoy what you guys were doing before. You guys are really talented and I appreciate the hard work for real. Thank, thank you. you. So yeah, much. appreciate we'll, it. We'll definitely stay in tune with your podcast. Okay, cool. All right. Dope. Tune in next Thursday. Bye. We up out We're out, we're out. Uh-huh. This is real fans, real talk. talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. We the illest of course. Real fans, real talk. We the illest of course. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. Reporting live from the cam. High in demand. So please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot. So put a tie on your plans. All court. Talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric.
Rick Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursday.